The doggies have won seven. The last seven in a row over the power. David Park and the ins and outs for the power. That's a, a bit of a warning, isn't it, for yeah. our sense? I, ha I didn't realise that until somebody put it in front of me, but that, that's a fantastic record. Look, Lo Logan uh, Gray, that's the brother, I think. Um, I don't know, I'm just Polly, nodding. Yeah, it no, is, is the brother. And Polly, I mean, they've got three, I'm not sure about Young Grey, but certainly two of them coming back for Cassisi and Hartley, who are two you know, prominent players for them, which they've lost, and Young Impey. Uh, I reckon they lost no believers on the weekend up there, and I reckon they gained a few yeah. non-believers along yeah. the way. I thought they were fantastic. When you think they've lost two games um, by a total of 11 points, it's not a bad record for a side that we were wondering whether they would continue on their rise or they'd sink back this year. Do you have them in the eight? The I had them in the eight, but I had them at the bottom end of I the eight. I had them sliding to ninth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and, and look, and last week, the thing that really lifted me, 26 more contested possessions in Sydney. It's good, isn't it? Just, I mean, you know, that differential is just unbelievable. I don't know what's a world record or not, but can I say Ebert with his 40 possessions game just now, he's absolutely got me. I thought Ebert was a B plus, I'm never going to be an A grader, but he's sort of reached that. Uh, Homps Great intercept bloke. He's starting to look mm. like one of the blokes who, who can really read the play and get the ball off the opposition. Uh, Gray, that we want to talk about a bit later on, has become the number one uh, scoreboard impactor. And I love young Matt Loby. You've got to love okay. a red-headed ruckman, oh, don't you? <laughs> and the, and the kid, the kid it's, it's showing his, his ruck centre bounce yeah. work here. I mean, to get clearances like this, quality running in the right direction off the hands of those blokes. I mean, it says something about the setup of Sydney. But this kid has developed aggression. He's good in his ruck work. He's taking a lot more marks. And he's down on the ground scrummaging and making the way for smaller players. Been absolutely delighted to see a kid like that grow. I always love to see a ruckman, especially when they're on your side, have dirt on his knees. Not too many ruckmen actually get dirt on their yep. knees because they don't go to ground, they don't crawl in after it. A Mumford type, yeah, those types yeah. really, really want to be part of the caper when it hits the deck and rolls. And I reckon this boy's got it. Yep, his tap work just then, I don't know whether he picked it up or not. They like the ruckmen to have soft hands, but when he sees a midfielder and he's clear and he's got a clear, he whacks it down their throat. So the port players, obviously, in terms of uh, the understanding, and that's really good. One of those blokes who steps into the midfield occasionally, but he's very good, as you've already pointed out, for scoreboard impact is this young man Robbie well, Gray well he, and now look at you, you compare the years and his progress I mean he had a, a good year in 2011 but up around now 110 ranking points I mean it's phenomenal for a bloke who does as much in the middle as he does forward. He reminds me of a Lee Matthews type of player. He's probably mm -hmm. playing 60, 40 yeah. percent. And his scoreboard impact's great, but he's still able to create from contest situations. Terrific player. A, a couple of years ago, what sort of player did you think he nah, was? I, I thought he was a real goer. I didn't, but I didn't the, realise he had that many tricks. Agreed. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Can that you give us that one again? <laughs> nah. <laughs> well, he's right. On the nose. But you, and you, you, you knew, oh, my answer was it, rather than you knew about this boy before he reached the standard he's reached. We were saying we thought he was no good. No, not we thought he was No, average. I thought he was a real average, goer. Yeah. I didn't think he had that. Grab a shovel, <laughs> Every so often, <laughs> just for about... Three or four seconds, Parko forgets he's on TV and slips into coaching mode. And you just, no, no, good, get him out of there. Just, just wait till I start spitting on you, then you know I'm really serious. <laughs> You'll get that vein out soon as well. Uh, let's have a look at the dish lickers. Dicko, they're all yours. The Bulldogs, only the one change. Cooney subbed out of the game with a hamstring. Um, Matty Boyd comes in, so like for like. Uh, great win over Collingwood. And mm. obviously the way they've gone about their footy heavily criticised. Are they rebuilding where they're going with their future? It was great that last week they brought in Jones and the first time ever I saw him run down a player um, chasing out of the forward line, yep. which means he's kicked into gear, he's had his time. There you go, Youngie, run down Youngie. He did, he? Youngie's still mate. got a bit of toe. But um, Cramery, I mean, their forward mix still needs a bit of tweaking, got uh, G down there. But one thing I want to look at is their ball movement because uh, the game previously against the, Bulldog, uh, the uh, Brisbane Lions was a tough one for them. They were in it for a long time and they led. This was late in the game and what they wanted to do was take it on. So Morris understands that, I've got to take this on. Here's where it gets interesting for the Bulldogs, the mindset. So Pickens got it right here. He makes one decision. Okay, can I handball over the top? No, I can't. He's got to turn inside there and bring uh, uh, bring them into the game. Kobe Stevens highlighted and Cooney at the bottom of the screen there. Creates them with come corridor side because we know Brisbane kicked it down the line. This is Jack and a pack in the schoolyard, straight back to exactly who kicked it. So they didn't get themselves back in the game. This is where they worked on during the week. It was corridor, corridor, corridor. Training sessions all week was, we just got to take it on. Make mistakes, do it through the midfield, we don't care. And they obviously got on the other side of Collingwood in that pocket of instability that Collingwood allow you to do. And when they came inside, 
They really opened the game up, gave their forwards every opportunity, and it was exciting. I think they uh, they looked as dangerous as any team in the competition on the weekend. Will Minson here would normally boundary side, picking again. No, I've got to come inside, even if it's a short chip. And it just creates. They get some overlap run, and look how deep, obviously, and a goal. Okay, So what they do well is when they come inside, they can use their foot skills and less pressure. So I thought they were outstanding. Just one about Liam Pickin then. I mean... Do you think that's conditioned response? He's been so used to trailing in mm. players around and, and behind them for so many years, he runs straight lines because well, he's trailing in behind somebody and that's a conditioned way response. he's been brought up in his footy. And Does he have to start changing? 100%. I mean, you obviously turn to the boundary line either on one because that's what you've been told to do or two, you're not confident on your kick inside corridor. So they will gain confidence, but that's how they're going to improve immensely. Look, my grandson's just texted me, uh, Jack in the pack. Jack in the pack. Well, I mean, there's people at home. Jack in the pack. Jack in the pack kick in the schoolyard. So yeah. you've got to pack up this end to pack yeah. up that end. Kick it. Take yeah. hangers. And uh, whoever gets it is the Jack. You ever, you ever heard of that? Jack, Jack in the pack. It's the first time I've ever heard of it. Nah, it's a modern one. Plus, uh, <laughs> oh, it's a modern one, David. Thanks. It's been around about 20 years. Um, <laughs> plus, please turn your phone off while on set. Um, <laughs> hey, this is how quickly it can turn around for you if you're a team on the rise. Port Adelaide played the Dogs in round 22, 2011. Look at the crowd. They had the sheets out covering spare space. Oh, look at this one. There it is. Good on you, Baz. Oh, so we're looking at the crowd there and checking... Didn't look great. Uh, checking out uh, how little it was. Now, this is two weeks ago. Port Adelaide on a roll against St Kilda two weeks ago, who aren't a great team this season, yet they packed the stadium out. That's how quickly it can change. Can we mm. see that again, uh, Hawley? That was um, that was unholy like that one. All that right. Well, on can we roll that? A, that can, was uh, can we roll that again? on the floor. Look, Have a look at that. He, he any said chance to me, look I inside, kicked, Hawley? I kicked five in the first. Why would have smothered it? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the blinkers? Oh, come on. Hang on. Actually, I'll get to my phone. I looked into the archives. I kicked six that day. <laughs> <laughs> the first six sailed through. Don't worry about that. Uh, and before half time. <laughs> uh, beautiful. Okay, who are we going for here, guys? Uh, port, pretty easily. Port, port, port all around. Right.